Stav, Abby and Matt, the B105 Breakfast Show. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the podcast. Yo, yo. Hello. Bit of awkwardness with Elle McPherson oh. in today's podcast. She hung up on us. Well, she didn't hang up. She said she was getting another phone call. Yes, but then she said she was going to call mm. back. She never did. She didn't call well, her. we don't know that. Yet. I don't know if she was upset by it, though, or whether, like... She legitimately had to go? No, I think she was just... She wasn't upset. I think she was just sick of us. Yeah. Like, I think, you know, she just had enough. Were, we, were we that annoying? And it was kind. It's Have kind you of like to us? <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you, you know when you're at a at a barbecue and you're like, ah, oh, this person wants to get out of this conversation yeah. with me because yeah. they keep looking over your shoulder for yes. someone else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then, you know, like or like the other one is always, I've got to go to the toilet. Mm. Yeah, or like I've just oh, got to duck to the bathroom. I'm gonna go get a drink. This job or, is actually the, uh, has taught me how to do that. I was terrible for it. Yeah, Terror. I would not be able to extricate myself from a situation. Yeah, so I'd leave a party and everyone would be like, "You didn't talk to anyone because I was talking to one person. I couldn't get away." <laughs> yeah, but this is, I've learned how to do it now. And the secret is really that people, learn? huh? What, and what do you what do you do? People don't care. No, they don't. If you said, "Sir, I just got to go over here," like yeah. you literally mm. can yeah. do that. You don't have to yeah. come up with some. Oh, I think I'm on fire, and I have to go yeah. put myself out. The people just go, "Okay, cool." Because yeah. I always do the whole. I'm just going to go grab myself. Do you want a drink? So mm. then it's not like you're, you know. Mm. But then you just still never go back. Of yeah, <laughs> of course not. Well, I think you know you. What you do is you think you're getting out of the conversation, but they're like, "Oh, thank God, oh, yeah. he's gone." gone. There should oh, just be like, we just need to accept that you should be able to say to someone, you're "I'm boring. done with this mm. now." <laughs> or every conversation should um, involve those chess things. You know, the chess timers. Yes. You just click Bing. it when you're done. Yeah, that's it. Like, like speed dating. Yeah. 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 I mean, it only really hurts the feelings of the person who's really into the conversation. Mm. Yeah. And the other one who get who's sick of it. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Like us. We're hurt. L doesn't give a rat. Are we hurt? No. no. It no. <laughs> it doesn't hurt at all. Mm. I just um, think. There would yeah. be, though. Is there a celebrity that if they did hang up on you? Harry Styles. Harry, you would be devastated. Oh my God, devastated. Yeah, right. Mm. What if he said, oh my God, you're just turning me on so much. I can't bear to be on the phone anymore. I've got to go. Click. That would be fine. <laughs> so if he's ever, if Harry, if you're listening and you want to hang up on me, just make it a good thing. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like you're hung up on him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When do I stop laughing at these kind of jokes? Uh, give it a year. <laughs> okay. Uh, at least you know what you're doing. No, but I genuinely, that made me laugh. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Wow. yeah. <laughs> There's my one for the day. Oh, all the other ones, no. Uh, uh, I'll take uh, a fake laugh. I'll take a fake anything. I don't uh, care. Of course. <laughs> you even uh, celebrate when you know they're fake. Yeah. Like, oh, well, they, they care enough not to hurt my feelings. Yeah. Uh, I, I keep an Oscar next to the bed. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's get into it. Here's today's podcast. The B105 <laughs> Breakfast Show with Stav and... Abby and Matt. Four-time Grammy Award-winning singer and songwriter. Keith Urban. Keith Urban. Keith Urban. This is very cool. He's got his album High, which is out uh, the 20th of this month. Keith Urban is in with us this morning. G'day, mate. How are you? We are fantastic. Good. And it's nice to have you here because usually you're on a, on a little screen know, in yeah. America. No, and a, looking out the window, mm. beautiful, brizzy. Yeah. Yeah. The brown snake in the distance. The brown snake. <laughs> It'll always be the brown snake. Yeah. Do you reckon for the Olympics, when they commentate for the Olympics, even the Americans will be like, the brown snake, there I hope it so. is. I hope so. It's quite I, colourful. I don't know if you're aware, but last year we actually got Allens to put a brown snake in their snakes alive. I didn't know. No. Is that true? Yeah. yeah. What did it taste like? Cola flavoured. Cola. There was a big oh, that's debate great. over whether it should be chocolate or cola, and we settled on cola. Well, otherwise, it'd just be a massive chico or whatever they call that thing now. That's true. You're not yeah. allowed to say that. No. Yeah. Mm. no sorry about that. Sorry. <laughs> we live in. I grew up with them, so yeah. they were my hard favorite. to shake it. Yeah. I mean, what do they call them now? Chicos. I think. Chicos. Chikis. 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 Mm. They are cheekies. Mm. Yes, yes, cheekies. Mm. Well, I mean, the real question is, Keith, what can you say these days? Because it changes. Very little. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cheekies. <laughs> Tastes a lot like chicos. Moving yeah. on. Here we go. Here we go. Mate, I... um. I have heard quite a few songs from this album, and i got to say I absolutely love it. Thank you. I was just saying out there before, because um, we're going to hear you perform, I was saying it's, it's that classic Keith Urban album. I could crank that on, have some mates over, have a few beers. It's it's oh, exceptional. That's awesome. Thank you. That's um, that's the best review right yeah, I'm there. Not, I'm glad. Because it's, it's, it's um, for me, I was like nothing more, nothing less than just that. Like yeah. good vibe, feel good, stick it on, let it run. Mm. Yeah, it's excellent. Thank you. I've, I've been dabbling, uh, and I've been taking guitar and singing lessons. I've done a. I went to an open mic muso night to get up and play a few songs and whatnot. And um, my singing goes trying to become you, Keith. <laughs> when did you start playing? Uh, I started playing about maybe fifteen years ago, right? Uh, and singing and playing and that sort of thing. But then just wanted to 
to take it. You know how, I, probably not with you, but I knew I was doing things wrong. I was passable, but I knew I was doing things wrong technically, so I wanted to get those worked out, right. that kind of thing. Right. Um, but my singing teacher was telling me, like, uh, uh, an artist... You had a singing teacher? Yeah, Jeez, yeah. You just went all the way. I did. This is yeah. great. Old mate of mine. Good on like, you. Yeah. Um, but he said that an artist will probably write about maybe 40 or maybe 50, maybe even 100 songs for just one album. Did you, is that your sort of process, or how many songs would you write? Uh, no, I think I had... I ended up with maybe 20 songs yeah. that I culled down to the ones that ended up on this record. I actually made another album right. in 2022, which was meant to be my next album. Mm-hmm. And then we were going to be touring in 24. Mm-hmm. And I just, I wasn't happy with it. Right. And I took four songs off it and ditched the rest and started all over That's again. That's got to be tough. I've never done it. I've yeah. made a lot of albums that's never happened to me, yeah, ever. Right. It was a, a bit of a gut punch. Yeah. What yeah. made you question it? I didn't, f- it, it just, I just reckoned I had a better record in me. Yeah. yeah okay. And um, I didn't, I just, yeah, it was, I don't know, it was just missing the bigger, fuller picture. It was yeah. a bit linear. It was mm. a bit samey, same. Everything was a bit same. Mm. Yeah. And so I just went, if I bail on this record and start again, it's going to be at least another year yeah. of mm. being in the studio. That means no tour till 25. That means this, but it was a big domino effect. Yeah. And, but I went, well, what's the alternative to kind of go, oh, it's fine. Mm. It's fine. It's got a couple of good songs. Let's put it out. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. That's the motto of our show. And I, <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Keep it going. We, we actually say that. You get what you get. You, you don't, don't get, get upset. upset. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Love it. What more do you want? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, but I'm glad I did because I was m- much happy with this album. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Lainey Wilson's on this single uh, with you, and she does an amazing job. Yeah, uh, she's great. I was quite surprised, though, because last time we spoke to you, you were telling us how close you are with Post Malone and you love his stuff. Yeah. Um, and you did that Elvis special together. Yeah. I was like, surely there's got to be a Keith Urban Post Malone song now that he's gone country. Hopefully. I think what Post did really smart, he knows that he's got to get the country cred first. Yeah. Right? right? And so you've got to collab with, like, specific country mm. voices. Mm. I don't have that that Morgan Wallen sound, that mm. Luke Co- Combs sound. If mm. you look at all the cats he, yeah. he collabed with. They had all, a lot of money to spend is what you're saying. <laughs> no, they're all legit southern yeah, sound yeah. They got the voices. Yeah. Yeah. They're that. Yeah. Yeah. They're as country as dirt, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not as country as dirt in, mm. in relation to those artists. So I think... Hopefully we get to do something down the track because mm. I think once he's accepted and embraced, he might be able to expand out a bit. Well, I think mm. what he does really well, and I was reading about him because um, you know, obviously he started off in a different genre and then moved to another genre, but it, for him it's about the music. He, yeah. just, he just loves music and in all its forms yeah. and that's why he jumps in headfirst on all of them and he, d- he does great at everyone he puts his mind to. He's, yeah. extra- he's just really talented, yeah. extremely talented and he knows his stuff. Mm. Like He knows all about country. And then he pops up in Roadhouse with Jake Gyllenhaal. Mm. I know? haven't seen that. Somebody yeah. just talked about that movie this morning. Yeah. Yeah. I mm. said, is it bad? And they go, it's bad. And I go, but is it intentionally yes. bad? Yeah, I thought so. It right. was it's bad. In a, yeah, it's a B movie. That's the point of it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a remake House. of Roadhouse. Right. Yeah. What do you want? You can't make it good. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but, I mean, you famously live with one of the famous um, um, greatest actors Look of her generation. Segway. Yeah. Amazing segue. <laughs> and a lot of musicians <laughs> Actually, do... Actually, now let's talk about your wife. <laughs> I, wasn't, I, I, wasn't going, I wasn't going to. <laughs> but a lot of musicians make the transition from musician to actor. So I just got to, before you go too far into that, do you find that in an interview? Do you sit there the whole thing? How long are they going to go before Usually they bring three quarters. up the coal? Three quarters. Oh, yeah, exactly. Three quarters away. Mm. Softball, 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 warm and fuzzy, <laughs> boom. <laughs> but would you ever about what it is. get in front of the camera? No. I don't like acting in my videos. Yeah, I never right. have. I find mm. it really uncomfortable. Okay. And I prefer to have somebody else acting. Mm-hmm. I'd much rather be in the studio. Mm. Like the studio for me is, that's my playground. Mm. I could spend forever mm. in a studio. Other people just want to get in, get out, get the record done, move on. Yeah. I could live in the studio. Hey, we're very lucky. Keith Urban is in the studio with us, mate. Stick around. We're going to chat with you a little more when we come back. And also, we are going to hear your B105 live performance uh, of your brand new singles off your album, High. It is next exclusive to us. Stav, Abby and Matt, stand by. The B105 Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby and Matt. B105 Live. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Uh, We do really appreciate it. Um, It's quite special to have such a big international name in the studios here with us. Thank Um, you, mate. Appreciate that. Thank you. Yep. Yep. You're on the work for the dolls still, mate. Uh, (laughs) All right. Who's ready to see Keith? All right. Please put your hands together, everyone, for Brisbane's very own Keith Urban. All right. Bright and early. 
It's not that early. You guys feel good? Yeah. Thanks for coming in. Matt Stab, thank you very much for inviting us to play. This is Maggie Borg, by the way. Maggie's going <laughs> to sing with me. Yeah. Who's coming to Lefties tonight? Anybody? One person. Wesson. <laughs> Fantastic. Me too. <laughs> I used to play over there at the, uh, the Lord Alfred back in the day. I think uh, they were telling me that Lefties was a strip club. So we'll see if that happens tonight. Live well, Saturday night, last time I checked Overdraft on the card, but I ain't gonna stress Not at all I called the bank tomorrow I got some Titanic friends, yeah, we all get wrecked Order anything we want from the bottom shelf Living large in a small town bar The clock goes round, it's one already Don't turn it down just let it play Another round To hold it steady We do one last cheers And down out beers And they tell us if I can't stay here Well I know That it's closing time I won't lie yes, I have more than a few And you know That I shouldn't be trying But hanging out with you is just too much fun You're so sweet You're always there for me You'll be fine on the couch or the kitchen floor Next time my place But tonight it's yours We're a team And he's the MVP <laughs> Yeah The clock goes round It's too already Ain't slowing down No, not today Another round to hold us steady. Uh-huh. We do one last cheers and down our beers and they tell us if I can't stay here. Well, I know that it's closing time. And I won't lie, yes, I have more than a few. And you know I shouldn't be driving. I think I. You know I shouldn't be driving And that's the spirit I think I should probably go home with you Oh, well I know that it's closing time And I won't lie, yes, I have more than a few And you know I shouldn't be driving I think Maggie and I should go home with you. Yeah! Woo! Stav, Abby, and Matt. B105 Live. Fantastic. All right, let's see what else we should do. Uh, and this one, Hard Like a Hometown. And here we are in Brizzy, my hometown, so it's a, it's a perfect song for here, so they... Heart's like a hometown with a welcome sign. A lot of folks pass through and don't think twice. My heart's like a hometown, a few bombs in the road, 
And there's a couple spots where nobody goes One half is growing up, one half is running down If you ever find yourself only in a city crowd Wondering if it's too late to turn around Baby, you already know you ain't even gotta ask Jump in your car, put the pedal down No matter how long that you get, long and spend, know that you live, but I still let you right back in. My heart's like a hometown. You've always got a place to put down some roots. I spent a holiday where all your memories hang like jerseys in a high school gym. Where you left behind your used to be's and could have been's in the rear view mirror. No, I ain't going nowhere. If you ever find yourself only in a city crowd, wondering if it's too late to turn around. Baby, you already know you ain't even gotta ask. Jump in your car, put the pedal down. No matter how long that you get, long and spin, I know that you live, I still let you right back in. Cause my heart's like a hometown. Hey, hey, hey. No matter how long that you get, long and spin, I know that you live, I still let you right back in. My heart's like a hometown, a wide open door. And just because you left it, it don't mean that it ain't yours. Keith Urban! Thank you. Stav, Abby, and Matt. B105 Live. I'd play all night if we could. Time Grammy Award winning singer and songwriter Keith Urban. Keith Urban. Keith Urban. And Keith is still on the air with us now. How many guitars you got? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> of course you do. Do you ever have enough, though, is the no. question. No. Is there just a, one more? No. <laughs> ever enough. And then I'll be guitars. enough. Yeah. yeah. And then I'll be complete <laughs> as a person. Do you have a favorite? I got a yeah, a few. Fa- all the ones, pretty much the ones I take on the road. Mm. Half a dozen yeah. that I really, really love and bond with. Yeah. Mm. I never realised that you were a car guy. Yeah, oh, I love cars. Yeah, like yeah. You, you, there was photos of you in a Lambo. Yeah. yeah. How many cars have you got? Not all of them. No garage space. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd like a bunch of them. Because, mm. I mean, when you come from having no car, yeah. when I moved to Nashville, mm. we didn't have a car. The bass player had a car. So all the band was living in a house and we used to have to put up on the, on the little whiteboard who wanted the car and at what time? Oh, there was a schedule to it. Right? Did you have to pay? Him, do you have to pay him to to use his car? We had to uh, all chip in for the for the petrol and everything. Mm. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, one car between you know four or five guys living in a house. Wow! So it feels nice to have more than one right yeah, now. That's right. fair enough. You can see where that desire comes from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's a lot to do with it. Mm. It's same with the guitars. You know, I came I came up with only I had one piece of garbage Ibanez copy of a Fender yeah, right. and I was like oh I'd love to have a nice guitar mm. so, you know, cool. is there anything though because I find that when you've got collectible stuff like that that you love you're at another extreme at times where you can be stingy about things that you don't want to spend money on things that annoy you is there is there stuff where you try and scrape coin up no, but I try and be like I don't. I don't hoard stuff. Mm. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Like I've, I've got I've got a bunch of guitars, but if I want another guitar, then I I got to get rid of one before I get another one. Right, yeah. one in, one out policy. Exactly. Or just one hidden in the closet down the end room. <laughs> so no one knows like how many. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a guitar player said one time he's in a music store and he's talking to the guy and the guy goes, "Are you going to get it?" And he goes, "I I'm thinking about it. I'm going to have to go home and see what's on the wood pile." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it is a thing though because I've got five and I don't need five, but I've got five. Right. And I love having five. Yeah. You know. Why do you have five? Uh, because I love them. Right. And I love them Are all they individually. Different, though? Yeah, yeah. I got my, my favorite different. at the moment is a new one. I got a mate and performer. It did a bit of a small body, uh, yeah. a bit more of a busking guitar, and that's all I've been playing for the moment because I just. Got well, it, you're Australian. You have to have a mate. And I've, I've come to the realisation that, that when any musician arrives in Australia, they go, welcome to Australia. Here's your mate and guitar. <laughs> yeah. It's like everybody has a mate. Yeah, the other one's Cole Clark, kind of 
similar. I don't know that one. Oh, it's an Aussie one too. Nice. It's yeah. the Aldi brand. You know, the middle of that. That's a special Good. buy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I had to go, go, they got them in there. I had to go to Woolworths to get the mate and then I go to Aldi afterwards to get the whole class. There you go. <laughs> uh, now, the, you, of course, you're going to be back here um, and you're doing the Entertainment Centre. I saw your shows uh, last time there, which were incredible. Um, and you did Lefties the other night. Um, do you remember those early day gigs here in Brizzy, like with oh, the yeah. 10? Where, is, there, is there one yeah. pub that, like... There's one next to Lefties, actually. I was telling everybody when we played it, I said, right next to the, the, is the Alfred. The LA yeah, Lord, Lord Alfred. Yes, Alfred. the Lord Alfred. Yeah. Mm. I, that was one of my regulars. Wow. Yeah, okay. uh, the Normby out there, yeah. that hotel. Um, the Orient Hotel, which is probably oh, not there yeah, anymore. Is that no, there anymore? No, but that used not to be great. Anymore. I used to love that. That yeah. was a great one. Um, oh, tons of them, mate. Tons yeah. of these hotels in Brizzy. I mean, the pub's still there, but now it's uh, Johnny Ringo's. It's a... Um, a cowboy bar. It's got a uh, bucking bull and everything. Oh, it, so. did you say bucking bull? I did say bucking yeah, cool. bull. Gotta be very careful. <laughs> Just I've stayed in the career yeah. for so long. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it can be both. Trust yeah. me. Yeah. Uh, so when you come back, and, and even that's bizarre too with the tours. Like, they're so far planned now. Like, this is for 2025 that yeah. we're only talking about. Like, yeah. uh, August is it next year? Or September? August next year. August next year. Yeah. Yeah. This would be much more full production. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Fireworks. All the bells and whistles. The whole lot. Going to have a bucking bull up there. I think you should. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Have they approached <laughs> you for the 2032 Olympics? No. Mm. I know that's going to go off up it's here. It's going to be sick. Insane, yeah. 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 In no, what that would way, be like to be in the javelin team or something like that? <laughs> he strikes me as a gymnast just looking at yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> what would be your sport if you could do one? Ooh. Break dancing. Because I think Break I, could, dancing. I could beat Ray Gun, that girl who went for a Oh, Australia. yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, did the little the kangaroo thing and the whole yeah. bit. Yeah. Do you were at the gymnastics. You'd have, to, you'd have to come up with one called the platypus or something. <laughs> some some yeah, move. Yeah, the do hairy that. platypus for you, man. Uh, yeah. Mm. Like it. Mm. Did you, go, you went to the Olympics, did you? We went to the Olympics in Paris, yeah. How was that? It was great. Yeah. It was great. Did you see Simone? Because you were at the gymnastics. We did. You? She's amazing. Amazing. She? And yeah. it was surreal because yeah. I'm, we're up in the stands and I keep looking down and I'm like, gosh, that girl looks like Simone. Oh, it is Simone <laughs> Biles. You know, that surreal <laughs> yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. But we also went to, somebody dragged me along to the table tennis, which I'm like, ugh. No, oh, that's fantastic. Aura. It was amazing. Yeah. yeah. It was insane. So, yeah, um, we, had a, we had a blast. Yeah, right. Was Snoop Dogg there at the gymnastics? He wasn't. Training? He came after we right. had gone. Isn't that bizarre that the Snoop Dogg was yeah. like the face of Yeah, he did Olympics. a great job, though. I great job. We did a uh, collab recently on the uh, Garfield movie. Wow, oh, yeah. there's, a, there's a sentence I never thought I would hear. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the song's called Roll With It, so come right. on. Of Snoop. course it is. Of course it is. Uh, well, mate, it's a real pleasure to have you here in the studio. High is the album. It's out September 20. Of course, you can get your tickets as well to see you on High and Alive, the world tour. You'll be here next year at the Entertainment Center. Keith Urban, great to see you, buddy. Good to see you too. In the studio. In, this in time. the studio. Much better. We expect mm. this every time now. Every time I can. <laughs> the B105 <laughs> Breakfast Show. With Stav, Abby, and Matt. It's, it's a weird place. Uh, I think that's apparent. But um, what I like about it is things that uh, you know as a kid, or you learn as a kid, and then you sort of always just know these mm-hmm. facts, yes. right? There's a whole new generation now that's discovering all these things on the internet that's blowing their minds. Yeah. Uh, this one popped up, and I thought I just thought everyone knew this. And I asked Matthew, and he didn't know. And I asked a couple of other people around the office. I haven't asked you yet because you okay. weren't here. Do you know what the O? You know, clock stands for. Uh, I didn't know, so don't feel stupid. No, no. no. Did any? Did anyone know? When you no, were the older generation did, um, but no, not a lot of people. And then that's one of those weird things where you go, "I've just been saying o'clock." I yeah. didn't know what o'clock was. I thought it was like ye olde English. It o'clock. kind of is, yeah, <laughs> because it's it's short for twelve of the clock. Ah, See? Yeah. okay, yeah. There you go. And then I thought, well, if you didn't know that, I'll see if I can dig up some other stuff that Ooh, you may not know because I do like these. That I also find interesting because O and of, it's the same amount, so you, they're actually shortening something yeah, to the yeah. same distance. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, you, you lose the the. Yeah, oh, yeah, true. true. That's true. Clock. Yeah. yeah, but I do hate abbreviations when they're just as long as yeah. the actual thing yeah. you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Um, for instance, this one was in. Some of these I didn't know. Actually, okay, great. Well. So, um, today I learned that sea urchins. Mm-hmm. You know, sea urchins. Mm-hmm. Do you know why they're called sea urchins? Um, no. No. <laughs> this is interesting. They're called sea urchins because hedgehogs used to be called urchins. What? So sea urchins are ocean hedgehogs. <gasps> when did a hedgehog become a hedgehog? In the, around about the 15th century that changed. When mm. Sega released Sonic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sonic the Urchin. I guess that still works, yeah. doesn't it? Wow. So, yeah. Okay. Um, toasters were invented before sliced bread. 
<laughs> I love this one. Oh, so, oh, and well, by, I mean, because by quite stand... a lot, by like 50, 60 years. Well, no, oh, people, so... people still used to slice bread, yeah. but they would slice okay. it by hand. Yeah. Right. So what they're, what they're saying is, is like, you would never buy a loaf of bread. Sliced. Yeah. Mm. Pre-sliced. It used to just be bread, not white sliced. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. It wasn't even that long. Betty White was born before sliced bread. So you yeah. can say it's wow. the best thing since Betty White. Yes. Okay. Mm. Which still holds. Yeah, it really. does. Yeah. This one's really interesting. Oh. Yeah, this one's really interesting. Cigarette filters, right? We all know cigarette filters. Yeah. And after you smoke a cigarette, mm-hmm. they look... Brown. Horrible. Yeah. Yeah. Cigarette filters were designed, and still are today, with colour-changing chemicals in them to give the illusion that they filter out toxins when in reality, the filters have little or no health benefits. What? There's a colour change mm. in the filter that when the smoke goes through, turns it brown, making it look like it's doing its job. Because I thought that was like... Because when... Okay, my mum... Everyone smoked in the nineties, right? Yeah, <laughs> she used to have one of those long, like Cruella oh, Deville things, even in the eighties. Like Audrey Hepburn, yeah. And you would literally empty it, and it would empty out like tar oh, and toxins that might, that and might stuff do like better. that. That might actually do better, yeah, because it would be more yeah. of a filter, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So she would, so those you, you put it in, put a filter in it as well, yeah. yeah. And it actually filters out, and it stops your fingers from smoking, yeah, smelling like mm-hmm. cigarette. Yeah. Yes, I had a friend who didn't tell their partner that they smoked. Mm. They were keeping that secret, so they would wear a rubber glove <laughs> when they would smoke. Oh God, <laughs> mate, your breath is still going to reek, yeah. and know, it's going to come yeah. out your pores. Yeah. 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 You always think when, because I, I used to smoke a bit back in the day too. You always thought, no, nah, I don't smell. No, nah. no, no one yeah, smell that. Nah. Nah, but you reek. Like yeah. Can, yeah, spray the links all over you when you're a teenager. Yeah. Like, yeah. I know. Lynx right? <laughs> <laughs> never smells just like Lynx. It's always masking BO <laughs> yes. or darts or something. Yeah. Quick one, pom-poms on hats. Not just for decoration. They were to tell the sailors where the roof was. So they knew they were close to the roof on the under the boat. What? 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 A little early warning system. Pom-pom. Pom-pom. But a pom-pom isn't going to warn you that much because a pom-pom, it's not really you're not going to feel it. It's well, you'd gonna... feel it bobbling. That's you know? true, I guess. Maybe they got bigger before they Maybe. became um, yeah. <laughs> Funny with that one. Yeah. It's, it's like that chain under a bridge. You know, you're going to be too big yeah. to, to get under that. Yeah. Which um, you still go, nah, I'll be right. Yeah. Bang! <laughs> yeah. Worst sound, isn't it? Because, you know, one way or the other, it's still going to make that sound again. Yeah. Uh, the colour of tags on your store-bought bread. Yeah, ready for this one? Oh, you know this one? I think I've heard this, um, but I forget. It's got something to do with use-by dates. Yeah. It tells the grocers what day of the week the bread was shipped. So wow. green is Monday, yellow is Tuesday, blah, yeah. diddy, blah, diddy, blah. Wow. Mm. And then they know how to stack them so that you get the front ones. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. hole in the pen lid. So you don't choke. Yeah. 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 And lastly, I didn't know this one, um, but ovens, right? You know how most ovens uh, have a little tray down the bottom yep. that just catches rubbish mm-hmm. um, and it's like an empty thing. Do you know mm-hmm. what that's for? Um, mm. Catching the, catching the, the fat. It's to put your food in to keep it warm while you wait for other stuff to cook. What? So mm-hmm. it's not baking it, it's just... Warming it. Keeping it's it. It's a warmer. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm. Look at you, you're a wealth of You're a fact man. I'm a wealth of useless information. No, Matthew. but that's important yes. useless mm-hmm. information. Mm-hmm. No, not really. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the B105 <laughs> Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby and Matt. Lauren from the Money Sheer Gold mm-hmm. Show, filling in for abs this week. I am. Now, are you, have you, you guys are both married, aren't you? Yes. How, how many people did you have in your bridal parties? I had about 12, I think. 12? Uh, yeah, it got out of hand. It was ridiculous. I had three each. That, three. I think that's reasonable. Mm. I think that's good. Mm. I've been a bridesmaid a couple of times. Yeah. Um, and I would never even consider saying no if someone asked me. But apparently, new research has shown that Gen Z bridesmaids mm. are saying no to joining a bridal party. You know, this has got to do with Can cost. they do it from home? Is that what they're asking? Yeah. Work from yeah. home, bridal party from home. <laughs> so 13, 10, 60, I want to know, did you decline being a bridesmaid? And if you did, mm. did the friendship last? Not a chance. Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, if a, if you if a guy got asked to be a groomsman and he said, nah, bro, I don't want to, I don't think or, the guy would care. No. No. I mean, I could be wrong, but it wouldn't bother me if mm. I made him. I was like, nah. But if I, because uh, I'm, I'm not married, I'm not engaged. Lockie, if you're listening. But um, <laughs> you won't be listening to <laughs> <with> me. <laughs> um, but I do think that if I had asked a friend and they said, look, I'm not in financially, I'm not in the right place right now to be your bridesmaid. It's really expensive. I would try and find a way around it for mm. them. But I would understand, I guess. 
<laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Because see, it's really expensive. But see, and that is the thing. I think the difference is too. Uh, for the girl side of it, there is a lot more involved. Yeah. You've got yes. your hair, makeup, shoes. Yes. Yeah, the boys just high Jewelry. Suits. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like there's not really that much to it for a guy. If you've got a pair of black shoes, wear those. Yeah. And on top of that, you've got planning the hens, which it always becomes this big thing. thing. And bridesmaids always end up a little bit out of pocket, even though you're getting people to pay. Mm. I mean, yeah. I do, I do notice that the Gen Z people are denying being bridesmaids, but not brides. No, no, exactly. No, yeah. Yeah. Good point, yeah. Stav. So apparently the cost of wings has increased by 13% this year alone. Yeah. And couples are being pressured to meet an unrealistic idea of what their big day should be, which is outside their budget and that of the bridesmaids and groomsmen. But you know what? It's not about the wedding, guys. It's about the marriage. No, that's We're true. forgetting that. Mm. Yeah, that's someone who's not engaged. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I bet you as soon as there's a ring on your finger, you'll be like, ah! <laughs> we we tried to keep our costs down as much as possible uh, in all aspects of it because it is that thing of it, it can get to be like a house deposit, even more than a Exa- house deposit, oh. and then you're like you're starting really far back. You exactly, know? Mm-hmm. So it didn't work though. We still cost a fortune. Yeah, it was, and it's it is that classic thing of you know there's the price of a cake and the price of a wedding cake. Yeah, exactly. You, you know they yeah. re- they really do have yeah. a, a wedding tax on stuff. Yeah. yeah, that's why you say it's for a funeral. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's, you, there's a death tax too now. <laughs> really? Yeah. Uh, can you just say it's a party and then just rock up and it's a wedding? Like, can my they... mate did that. <gasps> what happened? He booked. I uh, won't name the pub here okay. uh, in Brisbane. Yeah. Mm. He booked and said that they were having a party. Yeah. And said it was a birthday. Mm. And then they did the ceremony in a park, and then they all turned up there, and everyone was in suits and stuff. And they were like, <sighs> "Is this is this a, a wedding reception?" He was like, "Yep." Yeah. And they were like, well, you should have told us. And he goes, no, well, we don't want anything different. We've ordered the platters and everything like yeah. that. Yeah. And they were like, oh, the price would have been different. But That's why? why it. Because you can. Because it's the, oh. wed- the wedding service. Yeah. And yeah. he goes, this is exactly why I didn't tell you it was a wedding, because I yeah. knew that you would charge extra. Yeah, so right. what happened? Did he end up having to? I just partied on for the low- for the <gasps> birthday price. Well done. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It's so the birth of their marriage. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a birthday. <laughs> uh, so if you have declined being a bridesmaid or someone has declined you the request, mm. mm-hmm. uh, give us a call, 13 10 60. Did the friendship last? Mm. Or if you've even heard of it happening, mm. I'd love haven't. to hear from you. Yeah. No, I think people just take their punishment, don't they? I think so. You're like, yeah. oh, God, all right. All right, 13 10 60 phones are open. We'll get you on next here at Brisbane's B105. The B105 Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby and Matt. Always a bride, never a bridesmaid. Another dress that highlights my insecurities. Ready to party! <laughs> yes, we are asking the big question, did you decline being a bridesmaid and did your friendship last? Because apparently uh, more Gen Z bridesmaids are saying no to being a bridesmaid because of the financial burden. Mm. Um, and a TikToker, Stephanie Greenstreet, has actually addressed this on TikTok. <laughs> we need to normalise saying no to being people's bridesmaids or maids of honours and it being okay and not being a big deal. Like, not only is it expensive, time-consuming, and another job, et cetera, et cetera, you're going to test your friendship with that person. Is this person really the priority in my life that I thought that they were when they asked me to be their bridesmaid and I said yes? And if the answer you even think is no, really think about it and have that conversation early with that person. Mm. See, I guess that what they're saying is, is you're, like, when they get asked, they're going, I don't want to pay because your friendship's not worth that to me. Yes. So I can understand a bride going, well, if... If I don't mean that much to you, yes. fine. Mm. Yeah, that is different. Mm. But, um, I mean, it, like we were saying before the show, if you do see that person, if you're on the bride's position and someone says, I can't really afford it, but you see them spending money on ridiculous things yeah, all the time, yeah. mm-hmm. then that's also quite offensive. It's like you don't want to afford it. And I wouldn't have thought this would happen with this uh, phone topic, but uh, we've got an anonymous, both anonymous callers, Ooh. but anonymous number one. <laughs> um, what happened when, were you a bridesmaid or you declined? What's your story? No, my um, one of my friends, her friend just got engaged like last year, mm-hmm. and she was she was like, oh, I want you to be maid of honor to my friend, mm. and she's like, oh, okay, and then she's messaging the group chat, and she's like, oh, I'm gonna have my wedding here, and then she like sent the location, and she's like, oh, Sarah, oh, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> she's like, oh, um, isn't this where you wanted to get married, and she's like. Uh, yeah, that's 
very special to mine and my partner's oh. relationship. We drive past this wedding venue every time we go see each other. We've oh. done that for five years. And she's like, oh, well, I booked it because <gasps> it's the cheapest. Oh, she stole the venue. So, yeah. Oh, can, but can, can, can you steal a venue? Can you steal a venue? Yeah. Like, does that oh. matter if they get married in the same place? Oh, it means they just Matthew, have the Matthew, same, Matthew, they have Matthew, the same taste. <laughs> I think it's just like a no-no. Yeah. I think no-no. it is. It's like stealing it's someone's baby name. No-no. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Guys, guys would be like, yeah. sweet bra, same place. Yeah. 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 It's like when you rock <laughs> up and you're wearing... a double wedding. <laughs> yeah. Get a cheaper bra. It's like when you rock up to a party and you're wearing the same thing. Guys go, yeah, high five. Women turn around and leave. But the, yeah. that should be a compliment yeah. that you enjoy both. You have the same taste. Mm. Don't get me started on the stealing um, your baby she name. She doesn't thing. have the same taste. Oh, yeah. okay. Mm. I think this speaks to her character. She's a thief. Yeah, well, that's what I said as well. I was like, in the bin. <laughs> wow. Seriously? Yeah. yeah. Wow. I, I think that's fair enough. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a thousand other wedding venues. She, and she's also getting married first, though. That is That's, true. You should rush, rush mm. your marriage along. Mm. Yeah, I wonder, are the others engaged? Anyway, two, yeah, two, two questions. Time. They only just got engaged, my friend, uh. like a couple months after they did. I was like, quick, quick, quick. <laughs> she doesn't want to be upstage, uh, maybe. Uh, all right, mm. well, anonymous number two, try avoid saying names. That's yeah. how <laughs> anonymousness works. Uh, what's your story? <laughs> well, I was actually the bride, um, mm. and... In hindsight, I asked my bridesmaid, obviously, to be my bridesmaid, and I do wish she actually said no to me. Um, okay. Obviously, I wanted her to be in my bride, um, my bridal party because we're such good friends. And at the time, like, we were the first to get married out of our whole group. So it was, a, it was obviously really exciting and wanted to get everyone involved. But in hindsight, like, I knew she was financially burdened mm. and um, she just been made redundant from her job mm. um, and um, she was sort of separate to my other girlfriends that were in my bridal party who one of them was the maid of honour and they obviously wanted to go all out with all the shenanigans mm. and all the hands and it got a little bit out of hand and I kept saying like don't make it too extravagant, don't make it too extreme but like I'm not going to tell them no at the same time because they obviously wanted to celebrate mm. and it just got a little bit awkward because obviously she couldn't I afford it. The poor to... thing, and she she felt terrible. Yeah, yeah, and I felt really bad for her, but at the same time, like yeah, it was sort of a double edged sword trying to keep everyone happy. Mm, yeah. And I like I'm we're still good friends. Um, I would say we're a little bit more civil now than, mm. um, compared to what we were back in the day. Mm. But yeah, like I would have definitely taken it. It's hard to say because the wedding was so long ago, but I do, in yeah. hindsight, wish she said no and just had a conversation with me about it. Yeah. Um, it's a tricky one. Yeah. Maybe just chill things out a little bit. You don't, you don't yeah. need matching outfits for everything. But it is awkward as well if she doesn't really know the other girls mm. that well, which is mm. what I think anonymous number two said. You don't want to be kind of steady. You just kind of roll with it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. God, I love being a man. Oh, you should. Comes in handy. <laughs> <laughs> the B105 Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby and Matt. Elle McPherson. Elle McPherson. Renowned globally as the body. First Australian to reach supermodel status. Elle McPherson's got her memoir, Elle. It is out now and we're so grateful that we can be speaking to her. Good morning, Elle McPherson. Good morning. So we, I feel like you have to always say your full name, yeah. Elle yeah. McPherson. <laughs> yeah. Elle McPherson. Well, that's interesting because so much of my career was built on just one name, which is Elle, which oh. is why the book is is called Elle. Is it? Is that daunting, <laughs> sitting down, looking at a, a bunch of empty pages going, i got to fill these up? Well, that's not exactly how I, I, I started. And um, it was one of those situations where I had notes around that I was, you know, people would call me and ask me, you know, people, mothers or friends, people that were looking for health and wellness tips. And I started to kind of write notes on things uh, when people were asking me questions. And then before I knew it, it was like I had all these notes on my desk and I thought, you know, I think I'm just going to begin getting these down in a sort of, in a in a timeline even. Yeah, right. And that's how it began. You're of the year of the, the supermodel mm. when that was, you know, like there's so many models now mm. and I'm not to take away from the work that they do, but it's very different. You know, there's Instagram models. Yeah. That time in your career where it was the supermodel, everyone around the world, every magazine was talking about you pretty much every day of the week. 
It was an epic, <clears throat> an epic time in the fashion industry. It was sort of like the heyday of the fashion industry, mm. really, if you think about it, the 80s and 90s. And, yeah. and I feel very privileged and fortunate that I was able to experience that. Things have changed and no judgment on whether it's good or bad, but mm. they have changed. There was a time when being a supermodel meant that the more iconic you were, the more separate you were from your public, uh, the more successful you were. And today, it's the more connected you are. You know, there's that sense of connectedness, which is really important. And so things have changed and, and perhaps for the best. Um, obviously, in the uh, in the book, L, uh, you talk about your uh, cancer diagnosis. Have you been surprised with the conversation that started after you have said that you rejected medical advice and went for a holistic approach? Well, I what I didn't, what I was surprised was that there were many journalists in the media and sort of experts that had um, opinions on it, but hadn't read the book. Yeah, mm. right. <laughs> so they were they were not really clear on the facts. Mm. And uh, the book, it's not a dissertation on cancer at all. There's mm. one chapter where I describe how to make a decision when you're gripped with fear and how to navigate through the ups and downs of life. And that's what the chapter is truly about. It isn't really a, a sort of uh, a whole, you know, textbook on cancer at mm. all. And that was, just, it, that was just the context. And at the end of the day, it was your decision, yeah. you know. that's At the end of the day, it sparked a lot of healthy conversation. And, you know, discussion is so valuable because it, it brings awareness and it brings growth mm. and and humanity and understanding mm-hmm. from all different points of view. Over the years, you would have had a lot of brands who uh, have wanted to use you. Uh, is there any that you were like, nah, that's just too random for me? Yeah, there's been a lot along the way. but I, And that's why I, I spent so much of my career building my own businesses. You can see that with the lingerie business where Elma Close and Intimate's passionate about lingerie and women looking and feeling sensual and mm. so there's no there's none that actually come to mind where you think they're like hey El McPherson condoms <laughs> <laughs> charming in the morning <laughs> <laughs> he's like that <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> or Jim's modeling let's say you know Jim's got there's a Jim's gym everything mowing, isn't yeah. there? there's Jim's yeah. mowing Jim's dog washing <laughs> Jim's modeling I I always took steps toward things that really resonated with me and put my energy into things that I love. Finding what you love and doing it, and if you do, you never feel like you work another day mm-hmm. in your life. That's true. Yeah. I haven't worked in 19 years. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Everyone I'm ex- else I'm exhausted. Me has. Yeah. <laughs> we are slogging away working with him, Al. I give you the hot tips, slogging away. I mean, all this talk, you know, you are the body, you've done numerous uh, front cover magazines, but I truly love you from your five episodes in Friends <laughs> when you played Janine, <laughs> Joey's housemate. Do you have any goss from that time or any like really fond memories of being a part of a crew like that? I don't do goss, baby. Oh. But I can say, but <laughs> that I means can she say, does have goss, but you're not getting Damn it. it. <laughs> I had an amazing time with those guys. They're so talented in what they do. And the extraordinary thing for me is that my son is 21, but when he was school at school, when he was in kind of high school, he was only 14, and all his friends knew me as Janine from yeah. <laughs> um, mm. Friends. And so, you know, I had like a second career wow. from yeah. Friends. Oh. I mean, you'll always be an Aussie to us, El McPherson, but um, you live in Miami, is that right? I do. Oh, what a beautiful, beautiful place. Sunny, my, beautiful, sunny Miami, like, you know, it reminds me of Oz in many ways, just yeah. weather-wise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I was just thinking, if you're living in, are you still an Australian citizen? I am. Yeah, right. So yeah. you still have to, like, vote in our elections and all that kind <sighs> of stuff, but from, from uh, overseas. Uh, I'm not getting drawn into politics on morning on morning radio. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not going. Yes. I'm not going to ask you who you're voting for. I'm just thinking about the the, the, the logistics, ballot. the logistics of how you've got to do that if you're living in Miami. That must be. Uh, 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 do you know what? I'm so sorry. Mm. These guys are calling me. I have oh. a live TV show. Can we? Can we? Um, can we come back to this? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah sure. sure. Mm. Okay. I'll call you back. No okay. worries. Okay. okay. Bye. 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 I don't reckon she's calling back. Oh, no! She's not calling back. I don't, I don't think, I don't think she's no. calling us back. I think we just what got ghosted. did we just expose her for like voter fraud? Is she like not <laughs> voting and she doesn't want to be fine? We just got ghosted by Elmick first. I think that's a highlight of my career. Yeah. Wow. Ah. Oh, well.
She was lovely. She, she was. Lovely. She was. Mm. She's very guarded still, though. Like it's all mm. very. Mm. I didn't want. I didn't want. I don't want to get into politics with her. No. I was just thinking, do you have to go to the embassy? Like, what and do you do? It's not like you America. If you're going to vote for Albo or not, it's not like Trump or Kamala. Uh, How weird! Yeah. I reckon she just hasn't voted in like twenty years. She's like, I got shitloads of fines. Yeah. <laughs> the B one hundred and five <laughs> Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby, and Matt. It's big news from Parliament as the PM confirms nation- nationwide social media ban and how. It will work because that is the big thing. He's doing around today and he's getting asked that. It's all well and good to say we want to get an age uh, ban for social mm. media, and there already is technically. You have mm. to be, I think, 13 to have a Facebook mm. page, but it doesn't stop anyone. Uh, and everyone, when they get him on, they go, yeah, This is all very well and good, but the big question is, how's it going to work? Now, he has made an interesting suggestion of um, facial recognition could be something that they're looking at. So I was thinking that, but then mm. is that then leading in, like, do parents want their children having their? You know, Mm. people don't want their kids even on the internet in that aspect at all. Yeah, yeah. I bet if I shave my beard off, though, I might say I'm 15. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Uh, And the the other thing is, too, um, it has been trialled in other countries and it hasn't worked successfully either. Um, In the UK, they tried it for porn sites, um, but it just, there's no, I think the lack of. Well, they they trialled bringing in a a law uh, to say that kids couldn't watch porn or the facial uh, facial uh, recognition. An age limit on the the websites and stuff. Yeah, right. Um, <clears throat> but it, it's it always, I think, when you go back and back and back, you go, we'll put these things in, we'll put these things yeah. in, we'll put these things in. But bottom line is it comes to the end result is the parents yep. monitoring the kids and making exactly. sure they're not on these things. And educating them around it because eventually they're going to be on it anyway. Yeah, It's about yeah. the education around using it. Mm. Uh, and we were talking about it before. I think the tough thing about it, is it, it, it'll be easier for the next generation, but you can't take it off kids yeah. that have had yeah. it now. Yeah, which know? I guess is similar to the like the smoking laws that they're bringing in in mm. New Zealand and mm. I think the UK, where it's kind of like after if you're born after this time, yeah. you will never be able to mm. smoke cigarettes mm. and you've got to ease it out of yeah. society. I think it's one of those things too, like everyone should be able to make their own choices in life. Mm. Mm. So, And I know that there are issues around bullying and social media. I, I think things run a little deeper than simply just taking away social media for yeah. children. Yeah, You know, the way we broadcast news now and mm-hmm. the things you see on television, mm. um, news also is not information anymore. It no. is 100% sensationalised yep. entertainment. Mm. Yeah. And people pushing agendas mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And I think that stuff's got to be regulated yes. yeah. a lot more. The the crap that we let go on the internet. Yes. Let's take some of that off. Yeah. And that was the big thing. Back in back in the day, not that long ago, uh, not in my generation though, there um, was, a, I think it was a law, or at least it was a law in some countries, that you couldn't actually have ads in news. Right. Um, but then as soon as the advertising money came in, yep. you have to be popular, you have to rate well, mm-hmm. and then you have to appeal to the, the public. Mm. So yeah. that's where it all fell apart. And it's not a 24-hour news cycle anymore. Mm-hmm. It's what we were saying before, like minute by minute. So yeah. you're just constantly exposed. People are trying to outdo each other yeah. with exhausting. the yeah. most horrendous information yeah. that we just have to see every day. Well, they say um, we take in as much information in a single newspaper as someone in the Middle Ages would have learnt in their entire life. Yeah. Mm. And they were happier. I mean, they had scurvy and the Black Plague and they got beheaded for not paying their taxes. But generally, it was a good time. What a life. Yeah. yeah. I'd take it. Yeah. <laughs> Over this. I, I could have a lot of kids that follow me on socials mm. as well. Yeah, you would. Um, and occasionally I'll get messages and, and things from them. Um, but I am I always try to be very mindful about what I post on there knowing that. Like mm. mainly it's adults. Yeah. Um, but I try and think, you What's know. What's your, have you broken down your demographic? You know, you can do that in um, on Instagram. Yeah. What's your um, sort of main age group? Um, <laughs> it is, mainly women follow me actually. Yeah. Um, uh, surprisingly, um, men don't want to see other men dressing as drunk women. That's, uh, that's someone's niche. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. um, so the age group, uh, so 6% of people are 13 to 17. Uh-huh. Um, that's probably higher when you think mm. about it. Yeah, yeah. And then the rest is sort of 25 to 54 in there. Mm. Um, A lot of fallbacks, Matty. Well done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Keep your options open. <laughs> but I guess that what it is is, you know, on I'm obviously my content doesn't go out to them. What happens is you stuff like Andrew Tate's and that who yes. were floating around yeah. on TikTok Correct. Mm. were being targeted at 13-year-old boys yes. who were already going through sort of that identity crisis of mm-hmm. who are they, mm-hmm. um, society's telling them, you know, that they're going to grow up to be monsters, mm-hmm. and then they have this um, other man who's saying, no, you're a king or whatever. Yeah. And it's almost like brainwashing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the platforms know what they're doing. Yep. They yep. do it on purpose. Yeah. 
to try and keep them. So um, I like what the government's thinking, but I think there should be more sort of regulation on the content rather than necessarily. Yeah. Because you're not going to stop that. No. no. It's like alcohol and cigarettes. You know? Exactly. Like we all experimented with it when we were yeah. teenagers. Yeah. So yeah. we got the hang of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but even if it, if it was like it's come down to bullying, like bullying mm. – it's a it's an evolved form of bullying. Well, you, you know? used to be able to go home to escape, and it, now they can get inside you and way. everywhere. Yeah. And even when we were saying we grew up with computers in the study, you know, you mm. had to go in there. You could still leave it, um, but Your parents now could it's, hear you getting on there. Yeah. <laughs> but now it's constant. This little <laughs> thing in our hand, evil, solid that. modem impersonations, guys. Thank, thank, you. You. <laughs> thank you, thank you, very much. Uh, the B one hundred and five Breakfast <laughs> Show with Stav, Abby, and Matt. Alpha box tomorrow, guys. Ten thousand dollars on the line. September eleven is the uh, oh. date. Wow! Oh, gosh, there you go. Big day. Uh, Seven a.m. Your letter is M. Some of your answers are Magnolia, great film, Mosquito, and Mercury. And at eight a.m. it's R. And some of your answers are Roger Federer, Rome, and Renault. Ooh. How long will it have been the anniversary of September 11th? Uh, it was what 2001. Was it? So. Wow. Remember, the 20 year anniversary ago. was not that long. Ago. Yes, mm. well, obviously. Yeah. I went there uh, when I went to New York. Mm, and so, yeah. um, even, uh, well, we were with an American friend and she apologized because, in true American style, they put a shopping mall there. Yeah. And it's like high end shopping mall. I couldn't have put anything in the place. And she's like, this is, we all think this is tacky. Yeah. yeah. See, I, don't, I don't know that it is. Oh, she's American. She didn't. Yeah. We didn't care. But yeah. Like, yeah. like I, I went through the museum and it was uh, amazing to go down and see it. Mm. But at least it's sort of brought, it's like, what else what do else you, put you put there? Put yeah. There? yeah. You know what I mean? Like mm. there's, at least there's something and in that maybe space. It may be a shopping center where normal people could shop though. Yeah. Like it was like, the, I went into a uh, jacket shop and they were like 14 grand. And I was like, back <laughs> yeah. out slowly. Yeah. Let's, let's not forget though, the World Trade Center was also <laughs> full of like millionaires who true. were like trading yeah. off the lives yeah. of, <laughs> yeah. you know, that's not to say that they lost their lives <laughs> and they should have, <laughs> but I'm saying it was a high end part yeah. of yes, it was. America, yes, it was. Yeah. you know. Yeah, it was all being built when I went there because I haven't been to New York since 2009 and they were yeah. currently, like, everything was right. under construction. Mm. All of this. But that's also stuff. the world, isn't it? Oh, we've put a shopping centre there. Like, what What should you? Mm. Yeah. A park? It's a, it's a... They already have pretty big yeah. park, though. Yeah, they do. It's yeah. a tr- super tragic event. But oh, my there's God. No, there's no right or wrong thing, really. Yeah. Know. Anyway. Well. See you tomorrow, guys. Bye. 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 Stab, Abby and Matt, the B105 Breakfast Show.